well, okay, this general knapsack is known to be really hard, right? It's NP complete. It doesn't get any better than that, okay? Or harder than that. We we'll call that GK, just so I'm not right, general knapsack. But there's this special case of the knapsack called the super increasing knapsack, SIK, which is easy to solve. Okay, what do we mean by super increasing? What do we mean by increasing? Well, they get bigger, right? What do we mean by super increasing? Well, they get a lot bigger. Okay, how much bigger? Okay, well, it means if you put them in order, you pick a weight, it's not only bigger than the guy before it, but it's bigger than the sum of all the guys that come before it. Okay, so it's a lot bigger. It's increasing very fast. Okay, so here's an example of a super increasing max act. Pick, pick any number here, say 30. Okay, add up everything that comes before, you'll get something less than 30. Okay, and that's true for every, every number in here. Okay, now suppose I give you a subset sum, or you know, a knapsack problem here, and I say, here's the knapsack, here's the sum, 186. Can you find a subset that sums up to 186? How would you do that? What's the algorithm? Go backwards. And backwards? Start from the last number. Start from the big end, right? Okay. So is this number in there? No. Why not? Well, it's bigger than that. Okay, so that's a zero. Okay, how about this guy? Is he in there? It has to be. Why does it have to be in there? Because if it's not, you're not going to get up to That's right. All the rest of the stuff doesn't even add up to 120. There's no way you're going to get 186 unless you take it. So you have to take it. Okay, and what's left? 66. Okay, if that guy's not in there, this guy has to be. Okay. You're left with 36, this guy has to be. Uh, what are you left with? Uh, well, I think 57 has to be in there. Yeah. Oh, 57. Yeah, sorry. Wrong. <laughs> Just did that to test you. Okay, so, <laughs> so make sure you're paying attention here. Okay, so right, so this guy's in there, you're left with 66, this guy has to be in there, you're left with 9. Right. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. You're done. That's a linear time algorithm. That's always going to work. You start at the big end and you go. That's easy, right? It doesn't get any easier than that, right? You went from NP complete to like linear time algorithm. Okay, so the goal is this. The thinking is this, okay? Can we make it so that to decrypt the message, we only have to solve this uh, easy, super increasing maps act. But Trudy, who's trying to break the message, who doesn't know the private key, has to solve the you know the general knapsack problem, which is NP complete. If we can do that, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay, that's the best we could hope for. Okay. Um, damn, we might not have enough time. Okay, so we'll do just a little more, bit more here. Uh, the the plan is this. Here's the game plan. We start off with a super increasing knapsack. Okay, so that's given to start with. And then we convert it, we do some trick to convert it into a general knapsack, all right? And then the public key is going to be the general knapsack. Using the public key, it's actually easy to encrypt, okay? So trivial, easy to encrypt using that. The private key is going to be this guy that we started with, the super increasing knapsack, plus something about the conversion, okay? So that we can convert sort of back and forth. Now, given the super increasing guy, it's easy to decrypt because you can convert it back sort of to that case. <coughs> but given just this guy, you're left with that horrible NP complete, you know, general knapsack problem. At least that's the hope. Okay? Okay? Got that? Okay, so what are the details here? Um, okay, let's just. Uh, Last slide. Okay, so let's just uh, look at the big picture here. So, so we start with this guy. Uh, let, let's just suppose we start with this guy's or super increasing knapsack. You have to choose two parameters, okay, M and N. Okay, M is like your multiplier, and N is your modulus, okay. Uh, these have to satisfy a couple of properties. They have to be relatively prime, which means what? They have a multiplicative numbers. Uh, yeah, that's true. But the definition of relatively prime means what? They share no common. They factors. have no factor in common, right? That's, but that's actually why we choose them. Anyway, um, okay. So um, and n. The other condition is that n has to be bigger than all the sum of all the elements. So it's sort of like n could be n could have been the next element in the knapsack. It's that big. Okay. 
Uh, okay, we start with this super increasing guy, and we just multiply each guy times m and reduce the result mod m. Okay? That gives us a bunch of numbers here that look an awful lot like a general knapsack, right? They're certainly not super increasing, okay? It looks like the general case, just sort of a random set of numbers there. Okay, now the private key is going to be the super increasing guy you started with, and the inverse of m mod n, okay, not m itself, the multiplicative inverse, okay, again, which is easy to compute, okay, we won't do that, but it's easy to find. And how do we know it exists? Because m and n were chosen to be relatively prime, so we know that m inverse exists. Okay, so in this case, it turns out to be 12 if you just do the calculation. The public key is this guy, okay, is the general knapsack that we computed. Okay, now how do we encrypt? Well, since there's eight elements in the public key, you chop your data up. Everything's bits, right? Everything you want to encrypt is bits. Everything in the world is bits, right? Okay, so treat your data as bits. Chop it up, since there's eight elements in the knapsack, chop it up in, into chunks of eight consecutive bits, okay, and encrypt each independently. So suppose you want to encrypt these eight bits. Just take the ones, and those tell you which elements of the knapsack to add up. So we add up the first guy, and we add up this guy, and we add up these two, okay? And that gives us a total of 548. So the ciphertext for this, for this, this plain text gives us this ciphertext. All right, now how do we decrypt? If we have the private key, I claim we can decrypt really easily here. We take this guy, we multiply it by this magic number 12, take the result mod 491, we get something, 193. Now solve the super increasing knapsack, which is also part of the private key, using 193. And what do we get? Is this guy in there? No? Okay, so that's a zero, right? Is this guy in there? Has to be, that's a one. What's left? We're left with uh, 73, so this guy's in there? Yeah. Okay, this guy, no. Uh, this guy, uh, hopefully. Yes. This guy, no, no, yes, uh, whatever. It comes out to be exactly this. <laughs> So what's that n equals 491 doing there on the public key? Uh, you can take this mod 491 or not. Okay. It's up to you. Yeah, it, it doesn't affect the result. Okay, but the point is this. Okay, so if we know the private key, we can decrypt. If we know the public key, we can encrypt. Okay, now if you're Trudy, what do you get to know here? You know the public key. What else do you know? Ciphertext, okay? So you have this ciphertext, you have this public key, you're trying to get plain text, okay? How would you do that? Can't they just try all the primes? Uh, you, okay, you, could, you could try all, okay, you could think about something like that, trying to attack the system itself. But just given this information, it looks a lot like a knapsack crypto system. I mean, a knapsack problem, right? And if it's a general knapsack, that means you have to find a subset here that adds up to this amount, right? And the zeros and ones would be the plain text, okay? That's one way you could attack it. Okay, but that's a hard problem. That's an NP complete problem if it's a general knapsack. So that's good. Trudy would be stuck solving this general knapsack problem. We can encrypt and decrypt easily.